<laughs> Council meetings now resuming. Madam Clerk. All righty. You're smaller than me. All right. We are on proposed ordinance number 2017-29. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Benton and seconded by Councilman Bodier as mandated by LSA RS 391305 to fund for the projected complete year of dues, fees, memberships, subscriptions for the regulatory department. This is an ordinance amending ordinance number 1822, the annual budget of revenues and expenditures for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2017 for the city of Harahan, Louisiana. Uh, I just want to ask, when This is included? Yes. So do we really need to do this right now, or yes or no? Right. That's good. Okay. Thank you. All right. But Thanks. But that being up for treating, if we pass this one, gotcha. we can change the Okay. Okay. All right. The public hearing is now open. Anyone wishing to address this ordinance? If there's no one wishing to address the ordinance, the public hearing is now closed. Council discussion? Is the, any revenues to offset this expense? No, it's just an expense from the parish. Okay. They, the decided to charge us this year for services that they've been doing for free. I did send another email asking for a meeting uh, to discuss this because as we we were informed uh, right when the bill was due around that very short time period um, that all the municipalities received this bill and what they did was equally divide it among all the municipalities at that point I raised my objection as to their algorithm or how they figured it because the amount of people that we have, our population, et cetera, is much different than many of the other municipalities. Um, the ball was already in motion. There was no going back on how they had already divvied up the fees. So I am petitioning that for 18 that um, we have a seat at the table and say that uh, we have to have a better apportionment or algorithm in order to figure out what our fee is, because we shouldn't get charged the same as Kenner, et cetera, or Gretna, whose populations are much larger than ours. So the and issue is that we don't show a revenue line to pay for the expense, Correct. right? <coughs> and that can be a council decision on on that by looking at the budget I believe we have sent and that's why we've been keep deferring this because if you would like to defer it we can it's been deferred oh. constantly and every time it's deferred I bring this up and say for a revenue line look for a revenue line and nothing's been done this has been I think two months already so I, I just motion to call for the vote Okay, I have a motion by Councilman Johnston to second to proceed with the vote. Seconded by Councilman Wheeler. All in favor of the ordinance? Yay. Any opposed? Yay. Nay. Nay. We have one yay, four nays. <coughs> ordinance dies. The next one's I'm we, gonna we will we can we will address readdress it in budget though, correct? Right. Okay. Um proposed ordinance number twenty seventeen dash thirty. I'm I'm withdrawing that. Okay, withdrawn. All right. All oh, right. That's the C1? Yeah. Oh, good. All right, pro uh, proposed ordinance number 2017-32. Uh, the following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Benton and seconded by Councilman Johnston. This is an ordinance amending ordinance number 1822, the annual budget re of revenues and expenditures for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2017 for the maintenance department of the city of Harahan, Louisiana. The public hearing is now open. Anyone wishing to discuss the ordinance? If no one wishes to discuss the ordinance, we will now close the public hearing. Council discussion? 
I believe this was deferred from last month uh, because we were mm -hmm. figuring out, I About believe they had a grant or yeah. something yeah, that was supposed correct. to be involved in this? That, uh, not for the tractor, I don't believe there was I anything. There was. No, I thought you said it was. Was there? Was. there? I, I'm not recalling it. Huh? No, not for tractor. Not for the tractor. It was the the doors at the and then no, we, we have windows. Too. Yeah, I thought so too. It'd be in a minute. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. I want to say it's in I, I'll I'll have to say then I, I was in error. It, it, if I said that it was an error for the tractor, see, it's going it, to have it's a capital okay, expense yeah. that we need capital money. So this is a lawn tractor for the yes recreation. Is it maintenance? Maintenance. And that is. Just curious, what, what do they use it around? What do they do with it? Uh, Edwin's not here right, right. now. He's it's got multiple purposes. Yeah, it's, but it's a, a lawnmower. Right. Okay, a lawnmower. Okay. It's a lawnmower and, and the one that they have okay, now. So it's like a big one where you can hook something on the back and. Right. Right, and the one that they have now. Yeah. Is the kaput. only the only yeah. uh, okay. discussion last month was. Wheeler said, why are we paying for it if we have a grant? Mayor Maselli said the grant came in after the agenda was completed. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm in error. That, I, I'll stand okay. corrected. Well, that's why it was deferred originally, yeah. but if there's no grant and maintenance so, uses it, it comes yeah, out of capital. Yeah, we need it. <laughs> right, and but, there do, were, but does this ordinance <coughs> need to read that we're taking it from capital? I see where it says it increase says in the line outline. item. It, it says increasing line item capital You outline. have to increase that line to take from it because right. we put them all at zeros. Oh, so you right. have to increase yes. it to take from Okay, it. just making sure. Right. That's right. And this was, uh, became a very big problem for our crew, especially during the summer, um, getting crass cut on servitudes, et cetera. So it, it's quite important. Any further discussion? Do I have a motion to proceed with the vote? Motion. I have a motion to proceed with the vote by Councilman Johnson, seconded by Second. Councilman Benton. All in favor Yay. of the ordinance? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays, ordinance passes. All right, proposed ordinance uh, number 2017-33. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Bodier and seconded by Councilman Johnston. An ordinance granting full read-only access to any and all accounting software systems for departmental heads and their designated <laughs> representatives. It is now open to public discussion. Anyone wishing to come and speak about the ordinance? Since no one wishes to speak, we will close uh, to the public. Council discussion? Uh, I just had one discussion, which I brought up last time, about the editor thing. I talked to um, one of the people that helped write this ordinance up, and I, I think it's in agreement with the gentleman that wrote it that um, i like to motion to amend Section two. Can I get to the ordinance, please, yep. just for a second? Okay, thank you. Go on. Okay. Uh, section two, line 29. In addition to having editor authority for updating and modifications of their specific departmental data uh, to be taken out. So where it should read, uh, any administrator possessing, go ahead. possessing authority to grant access to the ENCODE system be herein directed to grant de uh, departmental heads read-only access to all aspects of the, and departments of all accounting systems in the ENCODE system. Councilman Bodier, you're okay with that? I, I'm sure. okay. Would I'm you, um, once you have it reduced in writing, I just have to line through it. Yeah. I have a motion to amend the ordinance by Councilman Johnston, seconded by Councilman Bodier. All in favor of the amendment? Yay. 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 Any nays? We have five yeas, zero nays. Amendment is accepted. Do we have any further discussion after the amendment? Do I have a motion to proceed with the vote of the ordinance motion. as amended? Motion. I have a motion by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman Bodier. All in favor? Yay. 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 Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Ordinance passes. Just one comment. I get read only, and that's how mm -hmm. I, I, it should be. But if you are the department head, and so the information in, in code for your department is basically yours, right? And you know it backwards and forwards because it's your department. And you live it every day. 
So we would probably need to have to come up with some type of process if the he right. chief finds or Tracy finds something that's an error and they want to make an edit. Who do they go? Who do they go to, and they will make the edit for you? All we have to do is send an email to okay. this one and the edits made. Back. Proposed ordinance number 2017-34. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Bodier and seconded by Councilman Wheeler. This is an ordinance amending the annual budget of, re of revenue and expenditures for the fiscal year in ending December 31st, 2017 for the city of Harahan, Louisiana. The public hearing is now open. Anyone wishing to speak? Jason Bruzic, still 7204 Stonely. Um, I was part of the Harahan uh, Police Department Advisory Committee that helped to, had some input into some of these um, ordinances that directly affect the Harahan Police Department. And in working on these, I'm gonna suggest and I would ask um, that somebody strike section one of this ordinance entirely in the future, we can readdress it, but strike section one entirely and change in section two the word may, where city of Harehan may use the line item on uh, line 24, to shall. Reason being, and, and leave the rest of the ordinance alone. So the amendment would be relatively simple. Section one would go away, so he would still need to utilize a line item budget system, okay? And w which is recodified in section two, but all of section four would stay unmolested. And the reasons for that, I think, are pretty thick. Uh, one, I understand from uh, hearing from a few folks that there's a lot of resistance to giving the chief an unrestricted budget. And I understand that, I respect it. And so, you know, whether it be, uh, you know, Ms. Benton or the mayor, um, if there's a problem with it, fine, we can work around it. And this, I think, is a good way to do that. Um, changing him to, he still has a line item budget. He still has to comply with 39 colon 1311. Nothing stops that. But the rest of the ordinance should stand. And so I don't know who wants to make, make the, the motion, but I think that that would be a good idea. Thank you. I'll make the motion to amend the ordinance. You got to wait till public hearing. Wait till public hearing please. If there's no one else uh, to discuss, we'll close the public hearing. Council discussion? Motion. Right, I'll make the motion of ordinance. Uh, I've got okay. just some questions, okay. though. <clears throat> I look at section four and Mr. Buris, I I'm just going to ask how how is that not still an unrestricted budget? I'm not sure I understand the question. I'm trying to understand how to implement, let, let me just read it in its entirety again. I'm sorry, I thought there was something in the body. Okay, I'm, go ahead and proceed. You ready? Mm -hmm. No speech. I just want right. to make a. This department would be the only department that would be excluded from receiving any fees that are generally allocated out. Like we are having. Um, Hold on. Tape change. For tape, tape change or can't can't hear. Oh, okay. Thank you. I rethink what I was saying there. <laughs> Section four of this ordinance would cause the police department to be treated differently than all other departments from an accounting standpoint. So anything that is incurred by the lawyer, the engineer when they're fixing his side of the building, the accountant, he gets free. And recreation, meanwhile, has to pay for the services that tend to his department in the gym. and. 
Chief St. Cyr has got to pay for his department's use of my time, Gil's time, and the engineering time, because you know they're doing things over there and trying to plan. And I don't think it's equitable for one department to be able to say, no, we're not paying for things that we require and need and able to be run as a city, as a whole, as a family unit that we are. Yeah. That's now, my two cents. To go with that, when I read it, I don't see it that way. I see that it's just supposed to go through a proper way where chief has to sign off on it. Right. But he has, he has continually stated he will not pay for my services to do his books. He, I don't think he ever said that. He said he wants to see the bills yes, before they're actually paid. Oh, yes. like yeah, no, he has said right, he wants to approve it before it's actually paid because he says he had contention with. What is it? should be uh, standard practice. Well, it's asking for prior written approval from the chief of police for the task generating the expense. So you're asking for approval before the, the task is even done. So how are you? How do you know how much that task is going to? You're, you're telling. Right. You're saying that she's going to have to tell you up front what it's going to cost. And, and sometimes and the accounting or, or the legal fees cost an hour. Well, no, I'm, I'm asking, Chief. I'm just invoices? asking how this. Do how do right you, I, no, it? Chief. I'm just trying to ask how would this be implemented. That's all I'm asking. It's a very. I mean, is that what this is saying? That it has to be approved prior to say. Chief has a problem right. and he says, Miss Lou, prior to it's to prior you. to it's paid. I, I'm reading it as I'm reading it as prior, no, to, prior the to the event. Prior to the event. I'm that's how I'm reading it. And you would one. understand if I'm right. managing a budget of a department, right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna consult for Carrie to help me with something. Mm -hmm. Carrie, I have this project that I need to do. How many hours do you assume it would take? It'll take eight, Dana. Okay, I can afford that. Then she's in the middle of it and says, you know what? I think it might take twelve. I mean, at least you're you're communicating, right? right. You're talking about what it's going to cost and maybe there's an overage or maybe there's an under but at least you guys are communicating and when he's getting the bill or something to approve he's he's been aware of it he's been brought in he's so talking you, about it excuse me i'm I guess i'm, I'm you I'm agree with me it that like it's do. it's ahead yeah. you're, you're you're doing but i think ahead. that's good but well i, I think for a, a bigger project yeah. definitely but for the small well, not, day not to day i mean bucks, if it's right. too that's that's too um and i am consuming i don't know about the, the legal fees but I know for accounting I sit down to do a month and some months every department flies through but one department bogs down for whatever reason other months every department has problems I, I can't foresee that I have no idea until I delve into it and see what's going on mayor as a point of privilege and not as Jason Bruzik as a citizen but Jason Bruzik on the Harahan Police Advisory Committee can we have him come back up to the podium please sure. just he can give us some clarity on where we're going Thank you. Um, to begin with, I'm, I'm somewhat surprised by the argument that it, whether the estimate comes out early or later, that he, he it's supposed to be he, he approves the invoice prior to, to payment after right. the fact. That's the way but I read even, it. But even so, let's just say for the sake of argument, we take the most outrageous of all possible interpretations. As a professional conducting professional services, it's perfectly normal, reasonable, rational, and c common. It's standard to give an estimate as to what you think it's going to cost to do the professional services for whatever period of time for whatever thing you're going to do. Right. For example, an audit. There's an estimate in advance, and he appro approves it and says, yeah, go ahead and go for it. It's going to cost $30,000. Go for it. I, I approve it in advance for something that's unusual. For regular day-to-days, he should be getting the bills and the invoices and things like that so he can approve those and say, wait a minute, what are you doing charging me for $40,000 for accounting services when you never stepped foot in, in my office and I didn't send you a thing to do. It doesn't make sense. Ah. So I think that there is a certain amount of communication that's forced with this, which I think is good in this situation especially. And also it allows for a certain layer of oversight and double checking because we, I think the big problem, one of the big problems that this is designed to, to correct is checks and balances. We don't have any. It's all goes to Linda Lulu, Linda Lulu runs the show, and everybody else just sucks it up. That's a problem, especially when you have no other oversight over Miss Lulu. So this section four corrects all of that by forcing the approval by the department head, and I'm sorry, I wasn't part of the fire department or any other you know, committee. I was on the Harahan Police Department Committee, advisory committee, so I wrote it for them. Um, so folks, 
Yeah, yeah, I don't know you want to do that. So but my, my point is, so this creates the checks and balances, this creates the oversight, and it allows for a freer flow of information. So, no questions. Oh, go ahead. Oh. Well, so, so the ultimate resolution is that before any bills are paid to the city attorney or the city accountant, mm -hmm. you want to you want to sign off on them. Okay. So <laughs> the written I, approval I do, is I, a signature, correct? Yeah. So yes. I'm, I, I do see maybe when it says one prior. So I'm wondering if it maybe should just say something like this: that some cost to the city accountant and city attorney may be charged to the police department, subject to written approval from the chief of police. That's that's what you ultimately want, which I still don't understand why all your POs you have to approve, but attorney auditing and accounting you don't. Which I, I still think every invoice that should come out of your department or any department should have the approval of the department head before they're paid. I'm just comments. I I, I just well, find well, this is my impression of this is that certainly with respect, just take Gilbert Burris out of it. With respect to the city attorney. It's clearly an infringement on the power of the mayor. The mayor governs the city attorney, and the allocation of the costs, budgetary matter though it may be, is not subject to the approval of anyone else, chief of police or no, elected official, chief of police or no. That, you know, the city attorney yeah, answers to the mayor. So that that you know simply is, is is I guess my the thing that jumps off the page at me as the single biggest legal problem with it. Um, Budgetarily, you know, I know what that that uh, old Harahan case says, but you know, budgetary processes have moved on since that was litigated back in the in the sixties. I think that whether this kind of ordinance is an infringement on the general powers of the mayor to administer the city, it's this kind of micromanaging by the budgetary authority, the the city council. I, I'm I, I really can't say, but I think that it is a, a legitimate legal issue. Um, but this prior approval of what the lawyer does, the chief of police simply has no authority over that under the Lawrison Act. This is why I, I said to you guys when I took this job, I think you, you, I think you guys have outgrown the Lawrison Act. I, I, for some reason, you're, you're not that big a municipality, but you seem to have a lot of big municipality issues with respect to governance, and you might want to start thinking down the road about a, a little home rule charter. But Right off the top of my head, I, I'm not prepared to look at everything that's going to come up as an issue with this. Um, but I, I got to tell you, if I, if I sent a bill in and the chief of police said, don't pay it, and you know, my reaction is, well, who are you? I mean, you know, it's the mayor who approves it. And if the mayor approves it and the chief of police doesn't like it, what's he going to do? Is he going to go hire a lawyer to, to sue the, the mayor? I, mean, I think maybe one of his concerns is why it's coming this way is because some of the invoices were not, and I know that was a coding issue, but maybe if he would have known before, it could have helped solve a lot of issues well, that we discussed. Well, what I do is that, you know, in my billing, because I've done municipalities work before, I've tried to, you know, if it's a litigation matter against the police department, it gets its own, it gets its own separate bill. And so I, every month I wind up generating six or seven bills to the city of Harahan because I've, I've tried to allocate it, but I worked on this project that was exclusively the police departments. A lot of them, as I told you last time, were sort of blended issues. You know, like it, it, it involves a lot of city departments, and police is a piece of it. That I just send out as Harahan General. So I've tried to do that. I'm not sure that, I don't know whether Linda can or not, but that's simply an accommodation for transparency. That doesn't mean that if I work a litigation case, and it's about the city of Harahan Police Department, the chief of police has any legal authority to say, I'm not paying this. I don't well, think he does. I want to address that real quick. The bottom of the of section four specifically takes out that particular situation. Yeah, I, I if you're working does. on behalf of the police department, that is absolutely going to go to the police department budget. So that's carved out. So that doesn't apply. But, but let's talk what about what I'm talking about ahead. here, if, if I could real quick, what I'm talking about here are the situations where you're doing something like we discussed earlier with regards to civil service, has exactly. nothing to do with him, okay, nothing whatsoever, but yet he's being, he may be getting mm -hmm. tagged for 30 or 40% of that bill on his budget. Now, there's a difference, of course, between actual money and budgets. They, they may not necessarily jive. What he has, will have the right to do at the end of this is say, wait a minute, don't tag my budget with that 
forty percent that should be the mayor's and the administration's general administrative. That shouldn't come out of my line item. That's well, what this does, then, and then, I think that's appropriate. Then maybe, then maybe it's best that the council would simply budget the police department for things that are one hundred percent police. Here's your salaries. Okay, Chief, what do you need this year? It's a zero-based budget. You have to operate your cars. You have to pay your salaries. You got to, you know, get your computer equipment in order. You got a few contracts that you have to let. Tell us how much that costs. That's the amount of money you're getting this year. Um, you know, I, I. Why not do it that way instead of? Well, that's basically what we do. We give them his budget. That's and then what happens? And then what happens when? Yeah, but I, I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not sure you, your budgetary process is zero based like that. Uh, I, I don't know. Is it? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, don't, don't I have a question. I'm sorry, yes, Chief. Okay. Um, so I want to go back to what Miss Lulu said uh, in terms of how is it equitable that uh, we're doing one thing one way for the chief mm -hmm. and, and an, another thing for recreation. I mean, is that how a this distinction is? that's very important is that the police department is handled differently in the statutes with regards to budgets. He provides the city with his budget, and then of course he's the master of the budget. Um, with regards to other cities, that's all administrative. That's for you guys to handle separately. It is a separate budget for all intents and purposes because he creates it and confects it and hands it to you for approval. That's the way it's written, not the other way around. So you're saying if he has some sort, yeah, go ahead. some sort of um, maintenance problem issue that needs to be repaired, he that wouldn't get he wouldn't get hit with that. That would come out of the, the city. No, certainly it, it certainly can. It certainly but can under this. He would say, "Hey, I need the money. You guys approve it, and everybody's on board with it. It creates that communication." I'd like to just clarify a point that you were yeah. stating, um, Mr. Burris. Who is in charge of proposing the budget for the city? Well, the way I read the Local Government Budget Act, it's, you, it's the mayor. You know, you, you, Correct. You, come, you, you propose it. Does, the, does, the, ha, does the police department have a separate that bu budget that's no, separate from not that I've seen, I've, anything I've, I've, else? No, no, no. What's, what's no, no. the citation that you, I mean, you, you, you the police that department confects a budget and submits it to them for yeah. approval. No, th they and then no. the city no, it adopts. doesn't happen that way. It goes. It all goes through the mayor. It's it the mayor. It's the mayor. <laughs> it's the it mayor who proposes the, the budget. The mayor presents the budget. Chief gives us a, a <laughs> what he's looking for, exactly. and his, his we will. make amendments to get it to Correct. where, where, where yeah. council And I is completely confident. agree with that, and that, that's what I'm trying to say. But then after that, he is in charge of his budget once it's allocated to him. Right. Yeah. right. So we're, we're all on the same page. He, he proposes something, you guys adopt it, put it into the city budget, and then afterwards he is in charge of his, his portion of the budget. I, I what, the, right. the way that it's supposed to happen is that all departments meet, the chief of police being one, presents the mayor wish list, sure. proposed budget, that is taken under consideration when the mayor proposes the budget. Then it goes up for first reading like we have in November. Then it's on, for like just tonight, it's on for a vote. Mm -hmm. That budget is supposed to be passed relatively intact. <laughs> it is. That's the law. And then after it's passed, it can... It, it, it has. It cannot be substantially changed, is what I'm getting at, and then it can be amended uh, by the council. When I was looking at the Local Government Budget Act um, in answering your question earlier this week, Councilman Johnson, a, a word leaped off the page at me. Leapt off the page at me. It says the budget constitutes a framework. That's the actual word. The, a framework. It's not. So, you know, this is this is just sort of whether. What's a framework? They don't define it. Is it just sort of a good idea? Uh, is the administrator allowed to move money around within that framework? Uh, I, I don't know. I'd have to be a, a magician to tell you. I don't know what the legislature intended by that. But I, you know, it, the way that I've always understood the process to work is that the mayor presents a budget. Every department can come in and Petition. make its case to the council. Look, I don't think the mayor put enough in there for me. I didn't. I don't think they did this, that, or the other. This lump sum appropriation idea, that we're just going to give a pot of money to the police chief, he can spend it any way he wants. I don't, I don't know of any support in 
law for that theory, except that old Harahan case, and that can be parsed a number of different ways. But the governmental accounting practice, I believe, is what any court would look at. So, well, they'd call the accountants in and say, how does the is it, there is a generally accepted <laughs> governmental accounting practice manual, isn't right. it? Right. It's the GASBY board is the one who handles that. They're the ones who say, well, you know, this is the best practice, this is the way you do it. So, and I can't speak with any authority to, to that. I'm not an accountant. But and what's at risk? I'm, even I'm pretty sure they don't say, here's a pot of money, go spend it and any, I'm gonna, any way you want. I worry and fear that if you do something different for the police department and say you put this forward, you have the auditor that comes back and says, well, you know what? That's realistically a police department charge. Or that's realistically a fire department charge. They're going to put it in that department through a journal entry. Here's, here's, here's a suggestion. And I I'm think just, Section I'm 4 just, covers that. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just tossing this out as an easy way to... to with suitable to documentation, proven costs. The big, the big problems have been, apparently... They don't like that they have to pay for Miss Lulu. So why don't you why don't you just like set a standard that says that mayor, you can allocate generalized costs throughout city departments, but if you if you bust their percentage of wages and salaries, let's say everybody everybody in the city government's got people who are drawn salaries. Take a metric that set that somehow divides up the city budgetary pie among departments. And they say, if you take these generalized expenses and it's busting you know, their percentage, you have to come and explain it to us, or the, you know, the, that department head gets to, gets to complain about it. You know, set it up that way. Just like they do in New Orleans, they'll take the IG. Nobody likes the inspector general. So they, they gave him a percentage of the city budget and says, this is what you get. So do the same thing with these generalized costs. Define what these generalized costs are going to be, the accountant, the lawyer when not working on a specific case related to the department. And then just say, okay, you can apportion, you can apportion it, but the apportionment can only go to the percentage of wages and salaries that that department um, has with respect to all wages and salaries paid by the city. And if you bust that cap, you have to come and explain it to the council or explain. To the well, one, the difference is you have an elected police chief. And by the Larson Act, I'm in charge. The elected police chief's in charge of the budget. And what has happened, for Where example, pardon? Where is that in the law? We'll show it to you. Let me show it to Mr. Gee. It says the mayor does not have the authority to control the expenditures of the police department. That's the, the case. That's that goofy El Marico. Oh, the goofy case. stuff. No, yeah. 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 The, the, <laughs> the goofy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's the goofy <laughs> stuff. The Get chief it. of police it's not, has the inherited black. authority to control and administer the day-to-day -day operations of the police department. That's, that, There's another one that says, no, that, but that's once not the state alderman, law. can I please finish? Once the alderman and the mayor appoint the chief of police, his budget, he has the power to to do to do his budget. I, I, I have to find it. If you give me a minute, I can read it word for word. There's also a new one that's um, in the Larson Act. With an elected chief of police, the mayor and the board of aldermen may not adopt an ordinance that interferes with the chief of police's day-to-day -day operation of his or her department. Yeah, well, uh, this, this the other and thing. this is the Larson Act that yeah. we that keep referring and, to with everything else. But what, and the mayor said, yes, I increased the budget for 18 because every time I turn around, I keep getting hit the, the, the most, with expenditures the that I've not seen. Again, given. for the city auditor, for Ms. Wu Wu, and for the city attorney. I don't mind paying. Well, and that's actually what not we true, use. Because you have said you will not pay, and when a budget No, came I said up, I wouldn't pay one from CRI because they didn't do the work that they eight thousand dollars. When the original budget for twenty seventeen was proposed by the mayor, you had line items in your department for the items in question. Council struck them out to zero. So you, therefore, have said that you will not pay for the services because there is no line item for your budget. No, ma'am. I said there was one bill from CRI that I challenged that you paid for about $8,000, and they didn't perform the service. Right. That's I what I said. Question. And Chief has never said that he, he's not going to pay it because no. they don't have a line item for it. But I've already had about fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 stuck yeah, on so my budget in 17 that I never saw for the accountant, auditing firm, for Ms. Wu Wu and for the city attorney. You I never saw the invoices. And when we did get some of them, 
and Mr. Buras, we paid the bill for a beta council meeting. Have you? All asked? I'm asking uh, is that we I'm see at, the bills beforehand. When, when it's you, like everything else, payroll, purchase orders, and any other invoice we get, I have to sign off on it, or it won't get paid. But they just go ahead and bill me for the city attorney, Ms. Wu Wu, and the auditor without me seeing it or signing So when off. you went to see Carl Riggs and Ingram for I didn't go see them. They came to see me. Whatever. That happened. Did you ask for what is the time frame and what is your cost and understand what you were at, what was happening when you met with them? No. You know the but it was like an $8,000 bill and they didn't spend that much time there. You had a question, Councilman Hewitt? Yes. I was trying to figure out, you're reading out of the Larson Act? Correct. Yes. And so that's got my, which one is that other. the one that's also got the AG opinions underneath it explaining it? Mm -hmm. Right. And then on the chief but I also have the handbook. My question is just what constitutes <laughs> In all due respect, Mayor, I don't think you know what goes on or operating the police department. Hmm. I respect that you are the chief and you are well, over you the know, day to day You just made a budget for me that we can't operate on. Make a proposed budget. budget. Yeah, Matt, can I go ahead and make the motion to make the amendments? Are y all, are y all Wait, Gilbert's looking up something. No, no, you know, the, the only, I'm, I'm trying to forestall problems that I, I foresee arising from this because it's just, it's I, gonna, I, 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 I think, Jason, would you like to get together and talk this over? My okay. question is, what is so hard with submitting those invoices for payment? Right. For you, for Ms. Lulu, and CRI. Those are the only three that are not submitted to me for- Can we just Chief. move forward with the amendment, please? I, well, I think there's a, a nice offer on the table. Here's, here's my problem with it as a matter of law. Just as I told you all earlier this week that one of these ordinances you passed was actually undercutting your authority under the Larison Act to introduce ordinances at any meeting, I, f I think there's, a, there's also a fundamental problem with this. The police chief, and I'll go back and revisit the provisions of the Larson Act with respect to his budget, but I can tell you this for a fact. The, the, he can't even hire police personnel without the budgetary approval of the council and the mayor. That's mm -hmm. right in the Larson Act. That's his fundamental function, to administer his personnel, and he can't even hire new people without, and the Larson Act is crystal clear on this, without the approval of the mayor and the council, and it says it in the conjunctive. So when you, try, when you pass an ordinance that's, uh, that intimates that the police chief has authority over other pieces of the budget, and we're not even talking about his personnel, but people like the city attorney, I'm gonna tell you that that, that is a fundamental legal problem because it interferes with the way that the Larson Act has the government structured. So, you know, I'm trying to. He's not you know, saying he has authority over you. He's but saying he's that apparently think I want to approve that an he, will, he wants to see the authority. invoice and sign off on the invoice, I, I just like he signs off on every other invoice that right. goes through the police department. The exception? I don't think he's got that authority, well, particularly over so the city attorney. So actually, Gil Gil Gilbert asked if he, if Mr. Yurzik is willing um, to meet with him and discuss this. My per my perspective on this is. I've seen a lot of crawfishing tonight, <laughs> so uh, with all respect to that, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Whether or not he gets a bill and has the right <laughs> to say, you know, sign off, say, yes, I know about this, sign off, say, no, this doesn't make any sense because it had nothing to do with the police department. She has to cut the check to you. Your beef is with them, not with him. So the Larson Act, he's the master of his budget. His budget, when once they've approved it and handed it to him, he's the master of it. So, with all due respect to your your point of view, and I respect it, I don't think you're right. And there's nothing wrong with giving disclosure to him of invoicing and her bill, your bill, whoever's bill, doesn't matter. I think that you are taking things to an absurd perspective. And again, with all due respect to everybody, and again, I do respect your opinion, I just think you're taking way too far. And like I said, I've seen a lot of crawfishing tonight. This thing, I think, is, is on point. It's solid. It's good. 
article right above it says he has to comply with 39 colon 1311, which is his, his budget section. Guys, I'd say call for the vote. Okay, so I'm gonna, I, have to, I have to make the amendments. I, 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 I'd it's like already to been amended, I think. Just make a little no, further discussion. Yeah. Okay. No, we have the motion to amend. I'd like to just comment that, you know, I'm trying to, you know, the chief says, you know, you don't know how to operate my day to day. And I concede I'm not the police chief. I'm not doing your day to day. And I'm going to tell you that you don't know how to operate our day to day. That what happens is there's many functions that either the engineer, the city attorney, or the finance administrator do that spreads along all departments every day, every moment of the day. And that a permission for Linda to take some time <laughs> and work on your budget or rework on it because you had questions and rework on it simply will interfere with the day-to-day -day operations and hinder the functioning of the budget, the financials, and, and the services that the city attorney provides across all departments. I, I, this is a clear uh, problem and I, I <coughs> that it interferes with the day-to-day -day operations of the city. Mayor, it wouldn't interfere if the invoices just crossed the chief's desk and let him sign off on it and approve it like he does every other invoice. Right. Yeah. Well, that, that, this would not be necessary. He has to prove everything else. So why are these three the exception? If you recall, I asked you at the last meeting these three questions, and I didn't get an answer then. This there would are, be not, not there are just certain. Just let him approve it. It should be a standard best practice. The, simple as that. What was simple is is that when we started down and really tried to upgrade our budget process, we decided to try and do this at this allocation of overhead. Because truly, there are pieces of our department, of, of the departments that human resources to do payroll, that a certain amount goes to maintenance, a certain amount goes to recreation, a certain amount goes to fire, and a certain amount goes to police. It gets spread out. So we were trying to give a very true reflection of what was going on in all departments. When you're working on a budget as a whole, or the financials as a whole, no matter what, it's touching the police department, or it's touching the sewer, or it's touching something else. All pieces move. I don't know how you te you sit there and go to tease it out. It's just. The, the bulk of it goes to administration. Correct. The bulk of it goes to administration anyway. <laughs> so we can proceed. Well, wait. I, I, I'm still not clear. I just have one more question. Um, so, like, I know the chief in the past didn't want to pay for his portion of electricity. So does, is this one of those things, too, that he won't have to pay for electricity by this ordinance? I don't think it's not saying that you don't want to pay for no. anything. I, I think he's just I'm saying asking. he wants he to wants see... To the you invoices before they get allocated. Right. Well, if he yeah. wants access to INCO, does he get a piece of the INCO? Chief, that, that electricity, thing? do you sign off on that? Uh, yes, that's true, too. No. What happened last year or year before when the mayor came in, there's one meter for all of City Hall. And because we're 24 hours a day, we agreed, we pay for it. I'll pay the whole water, I'll pay the whole electric bill. Just give me the funding. They, uh, they said, well, could we agree that the police department pay 40% of the electric bill? That's fine. As long as you give me the funding. I'll pay the whole electric bill. Just give me the funding for it. But quit putting bills on me that I don't have the funding for. You and there's the no, way, if I don't sign off on payroll, I don't sign off on purchase orders, or I don't sign off on invoices, they will not get paid. So how can they arbitrarily just take those three, the, you know, the city you attorney, just, the finance director, and the city auditor, and I don't see the bills. But you but, just admitted that you set up meetings with the auditor, or the auditor came to you, well, what's that got you, to do with... Well, I, I'm proving a point. You didn't get an estimate of time or cost. What were we supposed we, to we're do? We're talking about one bill, it? one time. No, it was multiple. Because no. what happened with what your meeting did caused subsequent work on the back end that Miss Lulu has had to go back and go back and go back. I think so you're muddling you this up a little bit. Talking about, totally. You know what so we're talking you, about, folks? 2016 uh, audit. <laughs> That's what they're talking about. So 
The first time we got a financial statement from Miss yeah. Lulu was October. That only went through July, so it's kind of hard to tell what money you have in your account. After it was over with 2016, the auditors said we could take whatever's left over and put in a 17 capital projects for the police department. We thought it was about 160,000. There was an ordinance written. When the auditors come back and do the audit, we $66,000 over budget. We sent documentation to the auditor and Miss Lulu. The auditor comes back and says, "No, you're 91,000 under budget." Ms. Lula says we're $75,000 under budget. But the audit goes through, we're $66,000 over budget. Ms. Lula was allocated in 16, $48,000, but she was paid well over 140, maybe more. So where do you think the money came from? The police department. So can we get back to this? So I, I just wanna say this about it. I have no problem with um, the, poli the, the chief Seeing his and signing off on I, you, you, you know it, sh it should be a standard. I, I, but best I have a problem with shall not be charged or bear expense of any kind or nature for any portion of the general overhead costs of the city of Harahan. I mean, this is to me is just yeah. way too inclusive. Why can't we just strike section four and say that he he has the the right to see all invoices that well, if you are take generated. away section one and section. Well, I'm just saying, it's, I'm it's not, not voting ordinance. for it the way it is. I mean, I know I'm just one vote, but I'm not going to vote for this because I think it's ridiculous. He, there are expenditures that the, the police should pay for and the police department should pay for, and I think this is saying that he doesn't have to. All right, last time was a bruzic, and then we gotta, we're going to wrap this up. Because we got a lot more. Uh, I was just going to say that um, if you read a little bit further down, that it, it defines ex excluded expenditures. And then it defines exactly what that is. And it's limited to salary and salary burden <laughs> expenses of the mayor or other city employees no, that are not assigned not to the Harahan to. Police Department. It says so, not, but limited. not limited to. Right. So this is just like the beginning of yes, what not limited it can be included. To. It could be expanded at any point. Including but it's not. defined within there specifically as. Just, not. Yes. And no. so no. shall include allocation salaries and salary burden expenses, all of these things. My point, and it, then it goes right, so specifically make a, to the account. We're going to make a motion to amend. There's a motion to amend. It's, it's, it's void. It's, it's All right, so the, we're going to take out section one. We're going to turn section two to section one, section three to section two, section four to section three. On line 39, where it says this section four, it's going to say this section three. And on <coughs> line 24, we're going to turn may to shall. You, uh, you have it reduced to writing. I have it all written on here. Let me give it to the people. That's a second. I have a motion to amend the ordinance as stated and presented by Councilman Bodier, seconded by Councilman Johnston. All in favor of the amendment? Yes. 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 Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero and eight. Amendment is approved. Do I have a motion to proceed with the vote? Motion. motion. I have a motion by Councilman Wheeler, second by Councilman Johnson. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? Nay. We have four yeas, one nay. Ordinance is approved. Proposed ordinance number 2017-36. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Wheeler and seconded by I'll second. Councilman Hewitt. An ordinance approving the resubdivision of lot A2A, Soniat or Chapatula's Plantation Subdivision, City of Harahan, Parish of Jefferson, State of Louisiana, made by Ronald Clement, PLS, dated August 25th, 2017. Um, do you recall the vote on this ordinance? I mean, this, what? It was 6-2. It was 6-2, correct? Yeah. I just wanted to reiterate. We will now open address the council. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, Madam Mayor, my name is Edward Suffren. I'm the attorney for the developer. I, I work with the Dwyer and Cambry law firm in Metairie. JW Colonial is the owner of the property, and what we have proposed today is a resubdivision plan. 
we have one existing commercial lot. It's designated lot A2A. This lot fronts on Jefferson Highway and constitutes 15 acres. Our proposal is to divide it into six different lots. The entire property is zoned commercial. This lot division would not change the development agreement. We do have a purchaser for lot one. This is proposed to be an assisted living development, and we are excited about bringing this economic development opportunity to Harahan. We have addressed some concerns with Mr. Buras, and it's relevant to the resubdivision ordinance itself. To uh, satisfy his legal concerns, and this would be mutually agreeable, I think, from a legal perspective, and the gist of our proposed amendment on the floor would be this. Uh, number one, that a perpetual conventional predial servitude of passage, ingress and egress, be established by JW Colonial, which shall provide access from all lots created in the subdivision to a public street. That would ensure access to a public street. Also, that all engineering, drainage, sewerage, building code, and other regulations for the city of Harahan and otherwise applicable by law be adhered to, comply with the law. Finally, there would be an additional provision. There shall be no adverse impacts on any adjoining lots. We have various representatives here from the development team, including the owner himself. We have our engineer, zoning consultant, and even the assisted living prospective purchaser. We're here today to answer your questions. We respectfully request your support for this subdivision. Anyone else would like to address the council? <laughs> Sorry, I have a problem with my leg tonight. Tonight, you're entertaining a vote on the resubdivision of the colonial property into six different parcels. This would mean six different owners would have to agree on the infrastructure construction. That's a near impossible endeavor. In addition, none of the potential owners have agreed to this development agreement. It is between Jake W. Colonial and the city. Several proposals for this resubdivision have been presented, including one showing 20 homes along Colonial Club Drive, which is not allowed under the present agreement. Tonight's proposal is for six lots, but Mr. Suffren approached the zoning board with another proposal for two lots, one for the assisted living center that is being proposed and the other for an additional unnamed commercial entity. But still, no master plan for the infrastructure has been presented. And once the commercial property and stormwater management pond is developed, how will the 76 homes allowed by the agreement be constructed behind those commercial lots when no access from Jefferson Highway <coughs> has been proposed? Of course, he said tonight they're proposing it. We'll see. Also, a 75-foot buffer along Colonial Club Drive and other setbacks were promised in the development agreement, but the council has not seen fit to put those agreed upon setbacks into effect. Will that be done first to protect the existing homeowners? The police chief and the fire chief have both stated that the proposed assisted living facility will increase their department's call volume and present severe budgetary problems, but the problem of sewerage is much worse. Our sewerage plant is at capacity, as y'all know. And we cannot add to that burden without facing the probability of huge fines from the federal government for overages and spills, not to mention the possibility of additional surge backups into residents' homes. Will this council be personally responsible for all cleanup costs for backups in residents' homes and for those fines? Or will you insist that the owners and developers follow the city engineer's present, uh, recommendations concerning storage and have them present a master plan for all the necessary infrastructure? That master plan should be approved by the city engineer before any resubdivision or construction is permitted. So I am representing a plausible, the only plausible concept for the Colonial Country Club property. The perfect use for this property is a cemetery like Garden of Memories. <laughs> we love Harahan, all of us, and I'm sure many would like to stay here forever. I have done the calculations, and here are the statistics you need to consider. 
quiet in chambers? I considered two sizes of graves, one to be four by seven feet, which would, could be sold for $3,000 each, and a mansion-sized grave of five by eight feet, which could be sold for 5000 After all, we have the mansionization of Harry in. Why not in the graveyard, too? <laughs> Using only 65... Can I have a motion for three more minutes? I have a motion by Councilman... Oh, yeah, yeah, second. Seconded by Councilman Benton. All in favor? Yeah. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Okay. <laughs> Using only 65 acres, not, not the whole property, which leaves 15 acres for the retention pond and eight acres for the existing buildings and cart paths, the figures are this. The four by seven grave would provide 101,121 graves at $3,000 each would produce $303,363,000. The mansion-sized grave of five by eight would provide 70,735 graves. At $5,000, it would produce $353,925,000. Combine those facts with the already existing building that could be used as a funeral parlor restaurant and the existing golf cart paths, that makes this a win-win situation for the community, for the owners, and for the existing residents. Not to mention, it would create a beautiful resting place and green space for many generations to enjoy with no trees being removed and no infrastructure being necessary. So to the citizens of Harahan, if you want to stay here permanently and enjoy the green space of Colonial, I suggest you call JW Colonial and get behind this idea. <laughs> But um, um <laughs> Tommy Buddy, 7208 Stonely Drive, and I think Miss Judy's suggestion would raise the Halloween celebrations in Harrahan to a new level. <laughs> uh, my only comment is, is uh, the Planning and Zoning Board submitted uh, some comments and issues for consideration to the council as you uh, address this difficult issue. Uh, at, you know, in an effort to move forward uh, to allow the developer to do something in compliance with the development agreement and the amendments necessary to the agreement. So I just suggest if you haven't had an opportunity to look at it, those comments and, and uh, issues that you might want to consider, please do. Thank you. Mr. Buddy, I didn't know. I was going to say, I don't, I don't, I don't recall that. getting this. That should have been attached to the minutes. It was attached to the minutes. So. So, so it's, you know, it's a couple of pages of, you know, 15, 20, 30 items. I can't remember off the top of my head what they say. But they're just the things that we thought through in the planning and zoning board uh, and some of the, the, um, uh, the speed bumps to drive over, uh, you know, obstacles to drive around. You know, it's a, it's a potential path forward with just our suggestions. Uh, <coughs> as to what should be considered in a, in a path forward, in a, in a decision tree. I say a path forward. Thank you. Judy, you said these were sent to us in our minutes. You're talking about the minutes that we just received this week? No. What were the minutes that we received? We're still doing address the council. Oh. I'm just trying to watch the clock. I'm sorry. Uh, Steve Lavasso, city planner, on behalf of the JW Colonial Group. A uh, couple of comments first. Uh, in the spirit of Ms. Johnson's comments, I have been involved with uh, cemetery development, and I assure you, they are one of the most challenging projects I've ever done. You do not want to ever consider a subdivision for hundreds of graves. I don't ever want to come to a meeting that talks about that. But <laughs> seriously, I do want to go back to one of the first comments Ms. Johnson made, and that is regarding infrastructure. Because what we're asking for here tonight is a simple resubdivision of taking one lot and turning it into six lots. And the subdivision process is governed by your subdivision regulations, which is, I would say, one of the best in the state. I did help write it. It's very tight. It ensures that the property owner puts the right infrastructure into the property before you approve the subdivision. Now, I, I want to emphasize the word before you approve, because what you are really giving authority for here tonight, if we Six get the votes, is for preliminary approval. It's in the 82 pages. The preliminary approval then gives the property owner the right to go forward and to build all of the infrastructure that you require. And at the end of the process, if the property owner has built the infrastructure based on your requirements, 
you give final approval, and then we have six lots that we could sell to someone else. I mean, that, that's how it works. We could lease it to someone, but those lots would be completely built in accordance with the infrastructure standards of the city of Harahan before you would give that final approval. So I want that on the record. Nobody's walking away from a half-built project. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So um, who would handle then the 15-acre uh, retention pond? Who would be responsible for that, the maintenance of that? That is governed by the development agreement, and, and we would all turn to those sections of the development agreement. Yeah. And, and it's specifically spelled out there. That's not part of the subdivision request, but, but, but as we all know, the development agreement and the subdivision request are, are intimately intertwined. But, but let me ask you this. In, in the, say, uh, that JW Colonial sells out all six lots and is no longer involved in it at all, those six owners then would be responsible for that 15 acres, correct? I would say no, that would not be correct because I, I, I think... They would still be, JW would still be... I think some successor organization of JW Colonial, based on negotiations with the city of Harahan, it might be a performance bond, it might be some sort of implementing tool to the development agreement, but, but that would be governed by how that works. We, we, no one's going to walk away from their obligations. And then the other thing is, I, I really think, I feel strongly that the people that face the commercial on Colonial deserve a buffer. And you all have refused to address that. And so if we do approve this resub, that will not happen. We can't, we can't mandate that. And so that is my concern. I, I feel those people deserve a buffer more than, than the people who will be across from the residential. And the fact that you all didn't provide that is um, un unsettling to me. I, I just think it's wrong to do that to, to homeowners who, you know, put all of their money and time into their properties, and that's going to devalue their properties. They deserve a buffer. And, I mean, I, if, you know, if y'all did that, I could vote for it. But okay. not without that. Thank you. Councilman Benton, I've been in some talks with... Um, we will now sorry, close sorry. address the I'm council. I've so yeah. been in talks with some theory. people from, with some representatives okay. of JW, and... Um, and I'm going to ask to defer because I still have a couple of questions that are concerned. I'm very close to making a, um, a vote on this, but I just have a couple of things I would like to, to address. You know, I've always been on board. This is my, my project from jump, but I'm with you. I think that the things that I need to address at this point in time are protecting citizens, whether they like me or not, whether they voted for me or not. I think that if this be my last term, that I make sure that I make it my best term, and, um, and that's uh, all. I'm going to I'm going to ask a uh, we've got a motion, but I'm going to ask further from J W Colonial. When I meet with them, I do not expect certain residents to be called out by name and have threats against their property about what they can and cannot build right across from their homes. I think we need to have a more dis respectful conversation about all the residents that live here. I will not tolerate that type of language again. That's all I have to say. We have a motion to defer by Councilman Bodier, seconded by Councilman Benton. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Ordinance is deferred. Proposed ordinance number 2017-37. Can we take a five minute break because some people are yeah, going to be leaving real quick? Okay. Nicole's got to come. Uh, Nicole, hurry up. Come on, Nicole. Okay. We just got to right, race in the clock. Are we rolling? Yeah, yeah we're, we're rolling. rolling. All righty. Proposed ordinance yeah, Proposed ordinance number 2017-37. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Bodier. Benton. 
Um, and I mean Benton, I'm sorry. And seconded by Councilman. It's with Benton. This is the budget, 2018. Yeah. I'll second. Second you, by Councilman Johnston. Councilman Johnston. All right. An ordinance adopting the annual budget of re revenues and expenditures for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2018 for the city of Harahan, Louisiana. It is now open to the public. Anyone wishing to speak may come up to the podium. If there's no one wishing to speak to this ordinance, we will now close to the public. Council discussion. Um, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion in light of the, the time that we have left and we still have quite a few items on this agenda. To defer this, I'd like to call for a special meeting next Thursday, December 28th at 6 p.m. I can't. I have plans. This I have. entire... Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm calling for the special meeting next Thursday, the 28th at 6 p.m. to adopt the 2018 budget. Mayor, we're never going to get finishes, and there are people here that came to talk. I, this is one of the most important things that we have. This council deferred and deferred and deferred on numerous ordinances. We have a deadline. And we I can have, make that deadline if the meeting is held on December 28th. It's still in by I the 31st. And I cannot make that 28th. I'm, I'm, conveniently, you can. I can't. On okay. the 27th Well, we, I believe we can still have the meeting. Can we not? Are you available? I think it's Council the mayor's budget. Councilman Johnston, Council Bodier, Council Benton. I'm well, well, available anytime. The mayor should be right there, though. I mean, I think it's all within reason to have the mayor available. Okay, so mayor, what day are you available next week then? The 27th and the 28th. I am busy. So busy. What other day? I, I. Well, the I'm only other day would then be the 29th. I wasn't trying to do it on a Friday. It's going and to be I, the 29th. I, I, then. We need to make sure that there's enough time to advertise, and I believe Thursday was the first day. To get in because of the holiday. To we advertise what? Because it would be a special meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. It'll have to be Friday, the 29th. We could do it early Friday. Well, people may work that day. That's why I was trying to. I'm off for my birthday holiday. Friday. I'd like to do it. It'd be nice to do it during the day. Many people are free during the day. They have council meetings in Jefferson Parish during the day. Other places have it during the day. Might be able to have it earlier, but not like midday. Right. <laughs> and we uh, agreed to maybe like three o'clock on the 29th. I, I don't. That's that's the end of the month for me. I can't do the 29th. What about five o'clock on the 29th? I really would like Thursday the 28th at six. I cannot do Thursday the 28th. Well, I can't do Friday at three o'clock or five o'clock. You've had this. Statutory. Mayor, the reason I'm only asking to move it is we have 45 Point of do privilege, I'm speaking. Me. That is so disrespectful. People talk, they have the right to talk. As soon as somebody talks, you got to gavel them. That is not true. It I is exactly making, true. I was making a sentence. We've oh, had we this me. on for first reading. You've sat with it. It's been on the agenda. We've had two budget hearings. And yet again, yeah, In the two budget hearings, you wouldn't answer the questions that I asked. I, I, I believe I was in talking. I believe I was talking. Oh, and that this has a statutory requirement. You're trying to force another special council meeting on a two days that I cannot make it. And they won't vote on a budget on a special council meeting. And right, we've been told that, that right. there won't be votes on special council meetings for budget. So we don't even know what's going to go on. We have not received one question, one inquiry about the proposed budget. Are you kidding me? We've had two meetings at exhaustion after two hours. We've no, had I think because no, there wasn't. were no answers. Are you? No, kidding? we did have answers. <laughs> no, you didn't because we, we did have answers. Agreed to adjourn because of frustration. Yeah, there was lots of questions. We lots had the and, and we answered your questions. No, you <laughs> didn't, as usual. So I'd like to have the special meeting on the 29th. I'm available either day. I'm not available on the 29th. I'm not available. Then the it's got to be the 26th. Does that give enough time to? I don't think that gives enough time to advertise. That's why we talked about the 27th. Wednesday. Tuesday. The 26th is no, Tuesday. Tuesday. You just said oh, you weren't right. available the 26th and the 27th. So you were busy. They knew they had 27th and 28th. No way, no way. Right. That's why we said Thursday. It has to be the 29th. I asked you before. It's got to be 24 hours before the meeting. 
Then it has to be so. December 30th. That's a Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. So. It has to be 24 hours. Uh, so when would you put into advertise? The earliest you could put into advertise would be Tuesday. I was trying to. These poor people. Anybody out of town? So it would go in Wednesday, and then that's 24 hours after Wednesday. Yeah. Thursday or any day after that. So Thursday or Friday is the only days before the end of the month. Can we do the 27th? I mean, I don't want to do the 27th during the day. Well, I wonder if you can. She said it would be advertised 27th or it would be advertised 26th. 27th, right? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Can we? What if we could we do it at four on the 27th? That's well, my birthday. Be that would just be the most worst way to. I already have plans. Oh, I thought you said you could do it. I can do it during the day, but at four o'clock on the 27th with a budget, I can only imagine. I've already. Uh, but you were put in for the thing tomorrow. And why does it take so long to get put on? Holiday. Okay. Holiday. Even yes, the, wait, even so Tuesday August. wouldn't wouldn't be. Excuse me. So this has already been put in for advertisement? No. 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 no if she, I, which saying if she puts in for tomorrow, when would it go on? Being that tomorrow's Friday, and yep, 25th is Christmas. But what about the 26th? Wouldn't it be on the 26th? I mean, I can ask. I mean, I can ask. You know, but. Um, I'm just know, curious. During normal days, yeah, but not holidays. Not holidays and also, so what does that make? I send it in Friday morning. They close in at noon on Friday also, so right. I have to send it in in yeah. the morning. Right. And then, if you send it on Friday and if they're closed so Monday, then hours, Tuesday would be 24 hours, right? So they would have to go Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday, that's what I'm saying. So, well, Wednesday would be advertised. Wednesday, right, yeah. Wednesday would be advertised. Yeah. And so you had to wait 24 hours after advertising. Right, so it would have to be Thursday or any well, for, day after right. that. Yep. Can we do this? We had to figure out something. <laughs> we right. Time's time growing, rolling. I have plans in the evening on the 27th and the 28th. It's your birthday. Well, one of them, is my children are taking me out, and then I've got birthday celebration for someone else on the next night. And I have. The 30th is a Saturday. Saturday morning. What about the 30th? I can't do that. I'm out of town. Okay. What, what about the 30th? I can do the 30th. So, and Is anybody available to do it? On what about the uh, 28th during the day? I, I can make any time work. What about the 28th during the day? On oh, my lunch hour, I assure you, it will last more than an hour. I'm going to bring lunch <laughs> and dinner. I can make it work no matter what. I'm fine. Can we do like 2 o'clock on the 28th? No. Yeah. Does anybody have any issues with that? Or? I don't. Do I have a motion to. Uh, three to the, five? Can we do 3 o'clock? 2 is. Right. 3 to 5. 3 to 5. 3. three. Yes. So you get your day to work. Yeah. It's the part time. I have 6. Okay. 6 o'clock. Yes. Well, can we do it at 3 o'clock? Can we do 28, 3 o'clock? Can we limit the time to 3 to 5? 3, 3 to 5. And that it has to be adjourned at 5? Yeah. Yes. Amen. Okay. I have a motion by Councilman Johnston to, to uh, have a special meeting to. Wait, uh, Where is it at 28? The 28th? Do we have to call for the meeting first and then defer it? Can we just call for the. Or do we just call the meeting and automatically defer it? Okay. 30, yeah, Thursday Something the 28th. Right. We can just set the meeting. Okay. okay. Um, I'd like to call for a special city council meeting December 28th Eight. at 3 five. to 5. Three, starting at 3 o'clock uh, to 5 in order to discuss, to adopt, to adopt um, 2018 budget. the 2018 budget ordinance 2017-37. <laughs> Okay. okay, so it's called. Okay. So now I need a motion now to defer. Now we have to defer. I motion to defer the budget ordinance, ordinance until the 
special meeting on the 28th of December from 3 to 5. Okay. I'll second it. So I have a motion to defer proposed ordinance 2017-37 by Councilman Johnston, second by Councilman Wheeler, to the 28th of December, uh, starting at 3 to end at 5. Sure. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? We have right. five yeas, zero nays. We joined together. Motion passes. <laughs> Used to go and the new business go. Oh yeah, that one too. Yeah, that's the one I was talking about. The, uh, the change in my All right, let's go. All right. Uh, now, ordinance number eighteen thirty six was vetoed. So uh, the filing ordinance was proposed by Councilman Bodier and seconded by Councilman Johnston. An ordinance correcting a clerical error in the Harahan Municipal Code for the city of Harahan, Louisiana. The ordinance was vetoed for the following re reasons. An ordinance cannot reappropriate money from past years that has already been spent. The police chief never collected the fees, thus no money is owed. LARS 33-2334 authorized the fee to be taken by the municipal chief of police, not the clerk of court. This is easy to misunderstand because some mayor's courts are run by the police department if delegated by the mayor and agreed upon by the police chief. Harahan's mayor's court is not set up that way. Harahan's mayor's court is run by the mayor and thus that function cannot be delegated to my staff. If that were true, then I could delegate my functions to police staff. And that is not permitted by law. Um, this is now open to public hearing. Anyone who would, wishes to address? Try and make it fast, you can. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to try to be quick. Um, this corrects what was clearly a clerical error before. And while this administration may run things this particular way, clearly in past administrations it was run just fine, and it was no problem. So I'm wondering now why all of a sudden it's a big issue and you're, 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 you're pulling out what you purport to be a statute saying that this can't happen when it was the law for a very long time and they amended it in 2001. They dropped off that bottom section apparently through a clerical error. This just corrects it. This just fixes the glitch, if you will. So I think you should pass it. I think it should go through. I don't think there's a problem. And I humbly disagree again with your analysis. Anyone else wishing to speak? We'll close the public hearing. Council discussion? No discussion. No discussion. No discussion. I just wanted to ask Mr. Buras his opinion on this. Excuse me? I, w I just wanted to ask your opinion on this. Um, well, what about? Well, the is the mayor on? is the mayor correct Nicole. or is Mr. Bruiser correct? Nicole. I'm not sure what it means by cor corrected retroactively. I mean, it wasn't collect the money wasn't collected. Well, the receipts from the police department, which they're supposed to collect the fee. Mm -hmm. The only receipts we have are for fingerprinting, for background checks, I forget, and, and for bonds. I have not one receipt in my possession that they collected that fee. The All appearance bond fee. The appearance bond fee. Thus, yeah, how can, how can you past, appropriate what you haven't collected? What? what? How can you appropriate what you haven't collected? Correct. So in the past, it was incorrectly taken as an additional fee in the court. But that was a delegation that was improper because the police department does not run the court so that he cannot order that city clerk to do that because it clearly says in the statute that the police chief collects it, just as he collects the bond. 
Thus, when he arrests someone, that should be the bond and the fee, and I have no receipt. Also, money in the past that's already spent is spent. And this council cannot think back and consider what another council's intention was that it was a clerical error and that they have money owed. Hold on a second. I'm, I'm revisiting the opinion I wrote on this. Yeah. And, and Mr. Burris, if I'm not mistaken, I think the reason this ordinance came up in the first place was because back when they tried to change the dollar amount for what was allocated to the police department, there was a portion of that ordinance that was removed yeah, I, when I they tried know. to do the. So I think they're just trying to put back what was originally there, correct? Okay. So, That's the appearance bond. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think this is just fixing what was already there before. Wasn't there just a paragraph that was left off? That's what I've heard. Yeah. The paragraph was there originally. I and think when they, they went to go increase the dollar, they increased it, but then they took that paragraph out when it's the intention was just to amend the dollar amount was existing. So we're just correcting what was already there. So I don't know what this is. But isn't it is sound, the way it's written? I don't have a problem with it prospectively. I'm not sure it can be made right. retroactive, though. Well, but my my contention is that the police chief, if he can delegate that function onto my employees, how is that appropriate? Isn't that it is clearly stating that the police chief does it? Now, in places like Gretna where the police chief is delegated the duty and has the budget to run the court, they collect the bond and the fee because the clerk falls under their personnel. And that's how they do it. Here, it is not that way. The budget for the court and the personnel are under my budget. If in turn, he can delegate to my employees. Well, this, yeah, this was, wasn't an issue I considered in the, in the original opi uh, opinion on the appearance bond fee, but I can see where the difficulty is coming from because the state statute 3323-34 says the fee of $15 shall be allowed for each appearance bond taken by a municipal chief police, police when required to do so unless suspended by the judge of the court. And then the statute was amended three times, the last of which was in 1995, after which the city adopted an ordinance which acknowledged the 1995 act, but instructed your clerk of court to collect an $8 appearance bond fee. So I'm not really sure who's got the responsibility for collecting this, whether it's the chief of police or the clerk. You say you've got a legal opinion that says that Harahan is different and the clerk of court it, gets the money? The law says that the police chief collects it. It's just like the, the bond he collects. It's just right. like his fingerprint fees that he collects. He cannot delegate to my staff to collect it. Although we financially administer it, we take it in, we put it into the financials, deposit it, etc. Correct? So, in uh, other cities like Gretna and I believe West Wego, the court falls under the jurisdiction of the police chief. The court clerk is, an, is paid out of oh, that budget. The police chief, yeah. Thus, he can delegate to that person to collect his fee for him. So that mayor's court, because it's delegated to the police chief to do that function, he can delegate and say, okay, that's my clerk, you collect it. Just like he says to the jailer, go collect the bond, right? Or when they go and get the fees. He cannot, if, if this holds true, then the police chief then can delegate other tasks and duties to my employees. I don't know, I'd have to, I'd have to, take a look at this as to whether the city has the authority to implement the collection of this appearance bond fee which is authorized by state statute in a manner other than what the state statute calls for um, I didn't address that question in the, the original opinion 
state law. They and take the job collected. And you all collect other no, fees by not. state law. Well, the the state no, statute says not. the fee shall be taken by the municipal chief of police when required to do so. So I'm not sure what it was that, that was supposed to mean. So you're saying we collect $115 on a bond rather than a No, the appearance bond fee is only 15 bucks. Pardon? The appearance bond fee. That's all I'm talking about. So you're about. saying we collect $100 for the bond plus 15 Oh, yeah. I don't think there's any question about that. Yeah, I, th I think that's clearly what's intended, that you were supposed to be collecting $115. The, the question that was proposed to me earlier this year was, you know, what becomes of this money? Does it go to the capital funds project or not? And I said, well, they dropped out section two, you know, whether inadvertently or intentionally, probably inadvertently. I'm sure. Um, but multiple times But my, my difficulty with this is not so much putting back what was probably dropped out as a mistake as the retroactivity provision of it. You know, I don't, I don't I mean, the court has dictated where they collect other money for numerous other entities. And did you defend it, Crime Stoppers, you name it, blah, 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 that the court collects money for? That's, that says the court collects it. It doesn't specifically right. say, it doesn't say the police chief and then we do it for him. It says the court collects that. And in a previous statement, Mr. Buer said that after the case is adjudicated, that's when the money goes to the police department. You said it at a previous meeting. Yeah, and I, I'm stick yeah. by that. But I, I never noticed this, this little wrinkle in this, that, that you've got this ordinance that requires the clerk of court to collect it as opposed to the chief of police, which is what's stated in the state statute. So I, I see two problems with it. Um, my my man in the street appreciation of what was supposed to have happened was that when you took the bond, you also took the appearance bond fee. It was, it was always an impression that yeah, the $100 that, was yeah, everything turned over to the court, and then when the court case was adjudicated, then the $15 went to the police department, just like $2 goes to Crime Stoppers, gotcha. so much money goes, and you defend it on and on and on. And so, Mayor, you're saying that you're... No, you're it says that the police chief shall collect it, because that appearance bond fee is basically and it, for him to administer the bond and the fee it's and the in collection too. That's probably it that's his that's I think that's probably right. That yeah. the, that your your ordinance authorizing the clerk of court to collect it is probably contrary to state law. Um, so th those are my two problems with it. I, I you know I don't know how you make it retroactive. If you haven't collected it, how do you go back and make it retroactive? Yeah. Number one, number two, can you can you actually delegate this to the clerk of court? Yeah. Can we what? How do you? I'm I'm not sure that the council has the authority to tell the clerk to collect it when state law says you get it, but the chief of police has to collect it at the time of, of arrest. Taken by a municipal chief and required to do so unless suspended by a judge of the court. I'm going to motion to call for vote. I'll second it. We have a motion to call for the vote. All in favor? Yay. 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 Of the ordinance. All in favor of the ordinance? Yay. 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 Any opposed? Yay. We have four yeas, one A, and the ordinance right. is passed. And now I would like to make another motion, being that time is a constraint. Uh, I would like to move all the ordinances for introductions, first reading, to that special meeting to come up for first reading. Can we? Which would be 2017, 38, 2017, 39, 40, 40 41, 40 and 42, be put on the special meeting on the 28th of December for first reading. Who I have a motion Wheeler. by Councilman Johnson, seconded by Councilman Wheeler. Well, I mean, if it's for introduction, it's already there. It just has to be read, correct? Yeah. So if we just read it, it's still done. She can read them very quickly. Yeah, I don't know about that because we still have five things, six things on new no, business. There's a second. So that's, yeah, second. Second by Councilman Wheeler to uh, put ordinances 2017-38, 2017-39, 2017-40, 2017-42, 2017-41, 2017-42, 2017-43, 2017-44, 2017-45, 2017-46, 2017-47, 2017-48, 2017-49, 2017-50, 2017-51, 2017-52, 2017-53, 2017-54, 2017-55, 2017-56, 2017-57, 2017-58, 2017-59, 2017-60, 2017-61, 2017-62, 2017-63, 2017-64, 2017-65, 2017-66, 2017-67, 2017-68, 2017-69, 2017-70, 2017-71, 2017-72, 2017-73, 2017-74, 2017-75, 2017-76, 2017-77, 2017-78, 2017-79, 2017-80, 2017-81, 2017-82, 2017-83, 2017-84, 2017-85, 2017-86, 2017-87, 2017-88, 2017-89, 2017-90, 2017-91, 2017-92, 2017-93, 2017-94, 2017-95, 2017-96, 2017-97, 2017-98, 2017-99, 2017-2000, 2017-2001, 2017-2002, 2017-2003, 2017-2004, 2017-2005, 2017-2006, 2017-2007, 2017-2008, 2017-2009, 2017-2010, 2017-2011, 2017-2012, 2017-2013, 2017-2014, 2017-2015, 2017-2016, 2017-2017, 2017-2018, 2017-2019, 2017-2020, 2017-2021, 2017-2022, 2017-2023, 2017-2024, 2017-2025, 2017-2026, 2017
All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. All right. Ordinances for intro. I mean, just kidding. Now we're going to <laughs> Councilman Johnson, I think I had reached out to you. And I don't know if you got to talk I, I to I have anyone. not been able to talk to anybody yet, no. Would you like to defer this appointment yes, please. to January? Please. So, well, I have... Uh, um, is that I spoke business? to somebody at Loyola because okay. I understand that the Civil Service Board is losing quite a few people now. Okay. Um, I have a resume that I'll be turning into Loyola to possibly add another candidate on for an appointment. So okay. I don't know if that will be on for January. Okay. So we'll, we'll just have to we'll see. We'll just hold it off for now. Yes. yes. Motion to defer. Okay. Or do I have, I have the motion, motion to, January. to oh. defer uh, Civil Service Board, board <clears throat> appointment to the January regular City Council meeting? Uh, all in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. All right. New business. Um, the vice president of the Harahan Horseshoe Pitchers Association, Gary Verhide. So patient. In the interest of time, I'm Gary Verhide, <laughs> vice president of Harahan Horseshoe Pitchers Association. Uh, here to reiterate a proposal. Um, and I'll cede the floor to the president of the Carahan Orchard <laughs> Pictures Association, Roy Willie. My name is Roy Willie. I own a home at 341 East Avenue, Harahan, but I do reside in River Ridge. Uh, Harahan Horseshoe Pictures Association, <coughs> I'll read it as HHPA, uh, it's a Louisiana chartered nonprofit association, and we are the first, Harahan is nationally chartered horseshoe pitchers association in the state of Louisiana uh, and we maintain that charter we're open to any resident of Harahan uh, and we also have uh, players from Orleans Parish and Jefferson Parish we have enjoyed uh, I should say prior to pump to the river <coughs> project we enjoyed a 25 or 30 year tenure at the Harahan Playground of playing, you know, being able to uh, pitch horseshoes. Uh, at that time, we had uh, a building with restrooms and lights, and we were uh, able to, you know, conduct our activities. Um, we purchased the lighting, which has currently been donated back to the city. And we're here asking to repower the lights. Uh, since Pump the River has been completed, the lights are in place, but currently there's no power to the what lights. We, uh, we made several um, <clears throat> inquiries a lot about the lights and Entergy can move to make them safety lights, so they safety lights, so they automatically come on um, at dusk till dawn, and um, so we're we're moving in that direction to get that done. Why do they have to install them? Because uh, they're going to be security lights. They're security lights. Wait, but you said you purchased. Well, the lights that we're talking about uh, are not security lights. These are lights that light up the horseshoe pit area. Right. Currently there are three telephone poles with lights attached. They are wired by the Barnes Electric uh, under the auspices of the Corps of Engineers. And, but there's no power to the lights. There's right. no disconnect switch and our organization is offering to whatever cost the city incurs to power those lights, we'd be more than happy to make a donation to defer that cost to the city. It was my understanding that those very same lights, we can make them also security lights so that they or an additional security to the playground and to the residents. This is what Entergy was proposed, was telling us, well, and that Entergy it could automatically. Harahan Playground needing security lights? That sounds <coughs> so strange. 
Well, basically, the lights are only lighting up the section of, of the uh, yeah. yeah the horseshoe pit. Which pits. was prior to um, come to the river. The you're problem just asking is, for it to go back to what to we usually do is we turn on the lights when we you know get there. We only use maybe two nights a week right. during our season, so we just turn them on and off mm -hmm. uh, accordingly. I think as for security lights, if you were going to do the perimeter, the perimeter of the whole whole playground, it's a different different and the, issue. The, there were um, issues with the, the way the connections were. Um, I believe that there was a private bill even going to someone who was paying for it. Um, we do want to do it proper. Um, yeah, well, they, they, they construct, the general contractor wired everything in a series, so all it needs is energy to put the uh, power to have the meter put in with the disconnect, and, uh, and then we'd get uh, someone to wire up to the lights. We can, uh, you know, donate. I just for that. received information today from from Entergy, and if okay. I, I can send it to the council, yeah, yeah that would be great. But it'd I mean, be I different than security you know, lights. It was Do just, you just rent that the space? Does your organization pay, or we would? Okay. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. But in prior well, to Pump to the River, you had not. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Prior to Pump to the River, we in essence had the agreement that we maintain the property within the fenced area mm -hmm. and we also paid the electricity okay. we had a separate okay. meter I know. that was uh, billable to the Harahan Horseshoe Association okay. which we paid so, uh, so did they pull the meter when pump to the river came when prior to pump to the meter okay. energy we had them pull the meter uh, so can you also, just the, that meter back? the storage no. building that we had uh, was destroyed after Katrina with a subsequent storm. Uh, therefore, they, the Corps of Engineers wouldn't rebuild it, basically because it wasn't there when they came in, right. even though we have photographs of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, that's, that's, we're not worried about that. We just need some lights. <laughs> So we could play. <laughs> I'll send this to the council. Yeah, we, are, we also had uh, someone, uh, Council, Councilman Johnson, was uh, donating, donating a building, you know, from Jefferson Parish to, to uh, replace that one. Oh. Well, we will get on so you can get your lights yeah. so y'all can start playing. Yeah. And I'm sorry y'all had to wait so long. Start? How long have you uh, been? We run through March through November. Okay. And how long have y'all been waiting for these lights to be turned on? Since the project has completed. Pump to the river was turned back over to the city. Gotcha. <clears throat> I had and a meeting with the mayor. That was a, how long ago was that? Quite a while back. Oh. About we this really issue. About this issue. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. Yes, it was. Okay, so and then wasn't addressed a long I, time ago. I came back because and... Because it couldn't be released because of pump to the river construction. No. After it was released, we came back and I met with your uh, administrative representative. I, I'm sorry, I don't recall his name. I'm sorry? I thought it was Pedro. It's okay. And I had two meetings with him. And at the last conversation, it was basically, we can't do anything for you. Hmm. I contacted what, Councilman what Johnson. I'd, what I'd like to see is um, that we come up with a rental fee that if you want the whole horseshoe area for a time being, then that's going to be, you know, we, we have to see what the what's equitable, what the, what everybody decides, and, and so that- We're not opposed to that. Yeah, I know you're not. So is the issue you're just not looking for power. Yes. Right. Okay. So the issue's not the lights, the issue is that we need an agreement to rent the space. <laughs> Anything else, y'all are willing to work, y'all just need power. Right. We need power. Right. <clears throat> yeah, we put the fits together. Right. The, yeah, I mean, we, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're constructing the, Pits, right. basically. I mean, do you well, the guys want to set some time as to when follow up will be, right. so you're not asking us in, right. you know, February. What we haven't heard anything. Well, the mayor like, said she just got I'll an email today, so she's throwing us information, right. and and we can we should disseminate be able to go from there. But I mean, the, I don't think the light should be security lights. No, no, definitely no. not. You we should be able to control it from down below. Right. Yes, either a 
panel right. or a, a or flip switch. single right. disconnect mm -hmm. switch. Right. And yeah. Gary, if you would like, we can put you um, on the agenda for the January meeting too, so we can discuss this right. again. So we can follow up. So we can yep. follow up. Yeah, just to give you a little history, we, you know. We've, we've got, got more business to do, and if we put you on, we sure. promise yeah. to put you on. Okay. We're, yeah. We've got our, we've got our midnight time clicking. We, All right. Okay. We are going to look into it, and we will put you on January, and we will come back to this yeah, and, and discuss it. Yeah. Please come back. Please come back. And I'll go over the economic uh, perspective right. too. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Definitely. Hey, new business. business. <laughs> Sorry, this meeting's just running. Real, real late. Probably number best. two, number two, Harrahan Elementary is respectfully requesting a donation or substantial discounted price to rent Harrahan Gym for their annual Mardi Gras ball, which will be held on Saturday, January 27th, from 7 p.m. until 10 p.m. Can I have on the agenda motion. 2017? It's 2018 to January. Sorry. To motion. Donate the gym. Yes. I have yes. a motion by uh, for free. Well, it's got to yes. be a dollar. It I'll, has to be a dollar. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Dollar. dollar. Sure. Okay. I have a motion by Councilman Johnston to, uh, at the cost of a dollar, to rent the gym for this event by and seconded by Councilman Bodier. All in favor? Yeah. yeah. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Permission is granted. CB the ABO application. All right. High content ABO application for yes or no LLC DBA DAX, DAX USA located at 6901 Jefferson Highway, Unit B for John and Dawn Orr. Chief Walker, uh, any problems? Approve pending uh, fingerprints going back to the state police that we do normally I, do, but do I have it's a motion okay. to grant a permission? Well, yeah. I, I notice every other ABO that we received has, has never had any of this on here. Pending occupational because license? Because they didn't have, they got their occupational license today, so they do have it. It has oh, okay. been signed off on the building official. Okay, so this was, um, this was generated before. So they, that was yeah. generated before, okay. correct. They got the sure. license today. They're good to go with all that. Okay. Good deal. Do I have a motion for oh, motion. motion? I have a motion by Councilman Wheeler, it. seconded by Councilman Johnson. All in favor? Yeah, yeah. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Permission is granted. Drinks holidays. On yeah, 2018 <coughs> holiday calendar. Uh, clerk, did we made that mm -hmm. one change? Did everybody understand what the change was on the holidays? If you would just okay. make sure that. Yeah, I just took so there's off. There's only one Sunday. Sunday. Okay. Yeah. I took okay. that Sunday okay. off, so okay. it's just Monday, the holiday. So everybody Even understands that? Right. Mm. Yeah. All right. Do I have a motion to accept the holidays motion. for the calendar of 2018? I have a motion by Councilman Denton, seconded by Councilman Johnson. All in favor? Yeah. Yeah. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Calendar is set for holidays. All right. Now. Then and the we, 2018 council meetings does, doesn't need to be on there. Well, no. We have a problem for Councilman mm -hmm. um, but we'd like oh. to have a motion. Oh, yeah. I'd like, like to make a motion to move the January meeting to the fourth Thursday of uh, what January. What day is that? I'll look it up. Uh, and I'm happy. 20, that's my mother's birthday. Was that twenty fourth or twenty fifth? To fourth. Um, to it would the be fourth. January twenty fifth instead 25th. of the eighteenth. Okay, twenty fifth. Thank you very much, y'all. Can I have a motion um, to move the regular city council meeting on January 18, 2018 at 7.30 p.m. to January 25th, 2018 at 7.30 p.m.? I have a motion by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman Wheeler. All in favor? Yay. Any opposed? I have five yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Now you have Kim Schwal. Kim. Yeah, Schwal. Um, yeah, Kim Schwal. Uh, the 500 block of Gordon Avenue is requesting a permit for a New Year's Eve block party again this year. We will need the street blocked from 6th Street to Wilson Avenue. The time of the party will be from 8 p.m. to 1 p.m. I mean, a.m. 1 a.m. Sorry. Chief, details been set up? Okay. Do I have Do I have a motion to grant permission? Motion. I have a motion by, Krent, by Councilman Johnson, second by Bodier. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Permission is granted. We will now address the council. I, well, we do. Hmm. It is ten protocol, minutes, but folks. we have ten minutes. All right, Mr. Buddy, you get to say hi and bye. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Buddy, seventy-two eight Stonely Drive. Uh, uh, this is sort of a repeat performance. The the uh, the allocation of of uh, administrative expenses is is at great expense actual expense to the city additional expense because of the time spent with professionals at these meetings going over it uh, in addition it distorts the actual cost of the allocated expenses so unless you're a cpa and you've got access to the budget you really don't know what was spent on auditing because it's been spread across all these different departments 
general and administration, uh, ex general and administration expenses in many companies are kept lumped together just so you can see what's being spent and you can control costs. Now past that, we seem to have a completely distorted sense of consistently applied principles in the city of Harahan. And I say that because I keep hearing where we can't spend any money because there's no money in the line item budget. But in the police department's budget, line item 0104-1124-0825, there's nothing budgeted for attorney's fees and there's $15,000 of expense. In other departments, I'm told we can't spend any money because there's nothing allocated. So it's a completely inconsistent application of accounting principles. And the auditors ought to be all over the city for that. Now, you can talk about whether some of this money should be allocated to the police department or not, but it shouldn't be allocated if there's nothing budgeted for it. It was so, in the proposed budget, though. But, but it's it not in the budget. the adopted budget. It's not in the budget. So I, I, I'm very disturbed by this inconsistent application of accounting principles. Ms. Lulu knows that one of the primary uh, principles of accounting is consistently applied principles. Cities all over the all over the case, and it seems to be at the whim of the administration. And this is wrong. If you if you cannot allocate money to it, don't charge money to it. Charge it to GNA. And the GNA, you're distorting the cost of the city by allocating this GNA, running up our expenses by all the time taken at the meetings with paid professionals here. Okay, we're on a flat fee. Okay, you're on a flat fee for the meeting. I thank you for, for mentioning that to me. Okay. So, and, but, but the meetings go on and on and on because of the allocation issue, and it's distorting the cost. Nobody knows what the auditors were paid when you look at these statements. You've got, you had, you got to hire a CPA to figure out what we're, the city's paying. So I really w would suggest you all get away from allocating expenses for items normally considered uh, administrative cost. And, and I, don't even, I, I assume for a moment the auditors allow it as a principle, but I suspect it's an optional principle, and you could get away with it. You, you could get away with not allocating if the city chooses. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Ed Krause, 424 Soniat. Can you hear me? Yep. Two items um, should be fairly quick. As far as the, the court is concerned, I think you guys know, I know that operation like the back of my hand. I know the system like the back of my hand. I'm not sure what's going on with the current clerk of court, but I'm very concerned the way things are currently being run. No offense to the mayor and what you're trying to do. I think you're trying to do the right thing. But here's the thing. With all due I, respect, if you haven't been there to see how it's been run, I don't know that you should well, make a judgment right no, now. No, I'm not making a judgment. What I want to make is a statement. Mm -hmm. I would like to suggest that we do a review, audit, call it what you want, two days, three days, and have someone come in and take a look. And, you know, you don't want the chief to send tickets to Jefferson Parish. Well, you know, I would feel uncomfortable with having a part-time clerk that we really don't know. By the way, I know who she is from Gretna. She's very good. But we don't know. We don't know her duties. I don't think the staff is properly trained. Digicom is a very complex system. I'm not saying it's a bad system, it's very complex, and it will take months and months. Jackie knew her job in and out. I don't appreciate the idea of her being called out for uh, being uh, insufficient. I think she did a job very well. I think part of the reason she's not here is because maybe she was under pressure that she didn't need. So I, I recommend some kind of review as soon as possible to articulate what's going on in I'd court. I'd like to have a motion to have a court au uh, audit of the finances in and out of the court. If I can have a motion. motion. I have a motion Just by fine. Councilman. Finances. Uh, the operations. The operations. I'm, I'm fine with that. For the operations, finances, in and out. I have a motion by Councilman Benton. Financial audit. Financial Not audit. financial, the operations. It's going to be the whole operation, the whole kit and caboodle. It's, I'm saying operations. You want to add finance, that's up to it's you. It's going to be the whole thing. 
the operations of, of the court, the court. And how the court. it's currently operated, you know, staffing, how we take tickets, okay. how they're applied. How all in favor? Yes. Yes. Any opposed? I, and I still have the floor. I know. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to go and help. Got um, two more minutes. And I'll so, add a little more time. Just trying to help. <laughs> Thank you. Here, here's the other item. It was stated at the last month's meeting that I did not vote. in code. Four, four, I, three, I, two. I didn't vote. I didn't vote. Do we need to back up? It was three. Sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get this last one in, no matter yeah. if we go past. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other item I wanted to talk about is INCO. It was stated at the last meeting that in January, whether uh, anyone likes it or not, we're going to upgrade to the new system. My consultant had. That is the worst thing in the world you can do. As the mayor knows, I've been pushing that upgrade for two years, but it needs to be structured. Someone needs to manage it. Someone needs to document the differences from where we are now to the new system. It has never been upgraded. Your, your staff needs to be trained, properly trained. We need to understand all the new functions. Then all the departments need to be trained. So we can't just say, okay, we're just going to upgrade uh, did, uh, in code and it's going to be in because I want it in. You're going to have problems. We may not be able to pay people. We may, I'm telling you, this is a disaster waiting to happen. So that's all I have to say. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. We will now close address the council. Secretary's report. Secretary's report for November. Um, total revenue six hundred eight thousand three hundred fifty four dollars and fourteen cents. Okay. Chief Walker. <laughs> Let's see how fast. Stats November two thousand seventeen. Five hundred sixty seven calls for service. We had 12 accidents, 45 citations issued, 71 charges. We had 10 patrol requests, 11 narcotics arrests, 15 narcotics charged, 7 felonies, 7 misdemeanors, 1 city. Other arrests were 53, 136 other charges, 27 felonies, 77 misdemeanors, and 12 city and 20 traffic. No murders, no rapes, no robberies, one residential burglary, no non-residential burglary, no attempted burglary, no motor vehicle thefts, no attempted motor vehicle thefts, three larceny thefts, and eight assaults. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, be safe. Okay, let's just go down the line. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, everyone. Ditto. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Pay bills, wait. We didn't oh, oh, we got to pay the bills. <laughs> pay bills. Oh, no. Um, $355,719.58. We are now adjourned. Wait, motion. Motion adjourned. Johnson? Craig. 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 Craig.